Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hubby Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. Good morning, everybody. It is so good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the tab. And what a difference a week can make in the weather here in central Illinois. Just to take you back seven days, it was 77 degrees outside and sunny. Today it's sunny, but it's what? Is it 25 yet? Is it got up to 25? I don't know. But a difference in like 50 degrees. Uh, if you don't like the weather in central Illinois, just hang around. It's liable to change. So uh, hopefully hopefully it warms up we're grateful that uh that you are here today thank you for joining us i know your bed was nice and cozy warm this morning and uh we appreciate you braving the cold weather today thank you also for those of you watching us right now online via our tab telecast on facebook or our youtube channel we're so grateful for you as well like love share comment let us know you're watching and uh, where you're watching us from amen Amen. Well, in the month of November, uh, we celebrate every fourth Thursday one of my favorite holidays, and I'm sure it's one of yours as well, and that is Thanksgiving. How many of you love Thanksgiving? Looking forward to Thanksgiving? Is that next week? Is it next week? I can't remember. I'm kind of off a little. Two weeks from, uh, from, from Thursday? Well, it can't get here fast enough. So uh, it's one of, my, one of my favorite holidays that we celebrate. Uh, with one another as as family, and uh, we discovered last Sunday that uh, it is really God's will that we don't just give thanks, return thanks one day out of the year, but that we return thanks what every day uh, of the year and throughout the year. God wants us to turn Thanksgiving Day into what? A Thanksgiving life. So throughout the month of November, we're in a series of messages called Thanks Living. Thanks Living. Uh, why? Because God desires for us not only to be grateful one day out of the year, but every day of every year. And we have a lot to be thankful for. We're going to dive into that. Uh, here today and next week in kind of a two-part message. Uh, but we discovered last week the root of Thanksgiving is one's relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's where it all starts. When you understand all that Jesus has done for you, um, it, it can birth nothing but thanksgiving and gratitude from one's heart. And uh, if, if for no other reason, uh, we can get up every morning and thank God for Jesus. Amen. Regardless of what is happening, regardless of what is not happening, uh, we can be thankful for the Lord. And, uh, and, and there's a lot more to it than that. And we're going to dive into that uh, here today and next week. But, but I just want to remind us that really the root of Thanksgiving, the root of a, of a thanks living life is founded and grounded in God. And when you've got a relationship with God, you have a lot to be thankful for. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. First Chronicles 16 verse eight. Uh, I want to dive into a two part message today called the reasons for Thanksgiving. Last week we talked about the root. Uh, this week and next week I want to talk about specifically 20 reasons. We're going to get through 10 today and 10 next Sunday. Now you say, well, Pastor Tim, are there only 20 reasons? Well, no. Uh, I only have time for 20. All right. So uh, there's more reasons to be thankful than, than the ones I'm just giving you. But from the word of the Lord, as I've been researching this over the last several weeks, I've discovered there are specifically 20 reasons from God's word that we are called to give God thanks and praise for. First Chronicles 16 verse 8 says this, give thanks to 
the Lord. Someone say the Lord. Amen. Proclaim his name. Now his name is Jesus. And make known among the nations what he has done. Boy, there's a lot in the, that, that one verse. Uh, but we're to give thanks to the Lord. We're to give thanks for his name. The name above every name. The name, let me remind you, at the end of the, at the end of the end, every knee will bow and every tongue confess what? His name, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. And uh, I would encourage you to bend your knee and bow your heart and uh, proclaim his name now rather than later. Now, if you don't want to now, that's fine, but, but you're going to. Every name, every atheist is going to proclaim Jesus as Lord. It's just a matter of time. All right. So, uh, but, but, but uh, I would encourage you to proclaim that name and confess his name now. And specifically, notice it says this, make known among the nations. Now, the nations, again, is a mistranslation. It's the word ethnos in the Greek. That's ethnicities. That's people. So we're to tell uh, the things that God has done. We're to proclaim the goodness of God, the greatness of our God, and what he has done. All right, specifically for us, uh, and for those that, that we love. So I want to dive into some things that Jesus has done, God has done for us. I call it reasons for thanksgiving. So let's begin. Reason number one, and I think it's the most important. That's why I put it number one. We should be thankful for his love. We should be thankful for the love of God for us. Psalm 107, verse 15. Give thanks to the Lord for what? For his unfailing love. Someone say unfailing. unfailing. Someone say unfailing. unfailing. All right, there we go. There we go. I want to emphasize that word unfailing because here's the thing I found out. I've lived long enough and some of you have lived uh, long enough as well to know that human love is great and wonderful as it is from time to time will fail you. Some of you have been failed by the love of a father some of you have been failed by the love of a mother. Some of you parents have been failed by your children or grandchildren. You've been failed by a friend. Come on now. And, and these people love you. It, it, you know, but we're human. Can, can we have some grace for one another? Can you have some grace for me? All right. I love you, but, but, but I'm going to fail you. I, I'm, I'm flawed. I'm, I'm a human, right? Uh, but there's one and I love it, whose love never fails. There's one who will never fail you, who will never let us down, regardless of, of who has let you down in life. And, and if you live long enough, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to let you down in life. Your boss is going to let you down. Your coworkers are going to let you down. Your, your neighbors are going to let you down. Your friends are going to let you down. But God, someone say, but God. But God will never let you down. And uh, we need to be thankful, amen, that his love never fails. In other words, my love for you might fail, your love for me might fail, but God's love for us will never fail. God's love for, for, for you is unfailing. It is unmerited. It is unconditional. You can't do anything so great to make God love you more, and you can never do anything so bad to make him love you less. It's amazing to me. See, it's not, it's not our love. It's God's love. It's in the Greek, it's called agape. Someone say agape. You just spoke Greek. It's the agape love of God. It, it, it's, it's above and beyond. Matter of fact, the only way to translate it is the God kind of love. It, God, God is the only one that can truly love us through everything. Through our, on our best day, God loves us. And on our worst day, God loves us. And, and that's the, the goal, of course, for all of us is to live in agape, to, to, to share and to receive that, that unconditional love from one another. But we fail. But God never does. God will never let you down. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. No one else might not love you, but God loves you. No one else might not like you, but God likes you. No one else might invite you over for Thanksgiving, but God will invite you over for Thanksgiving. Just invite the Lord to show up at your day. If it was just you and your cat, show up and just say, it's me and Jesus. Set a, set a chair out and a plate for Jesus, right? And, and he, he loves you. 
you. He loves you. Well, how do we know? Well, I'm glad you asked. John 3, 16 tells us that God so loved us. God so loved the world. He what? He gave the greatest treasure in the universe for you, for me, as a demonstration, as a gift. You know, we give gifts to those we love. If you love someone, you get them gifts. I know some of you are kind of really gifted in giving gifts, but, but you know, uh, who, who we, if you love people, you, you, you purchase stuff for them. You give them gifts just as tokens uh, and, and of, of your love for them, of your appreciation for them. Well, God so loved us. He what? He gave, he gave not an angel. He gave not a living creature. He gave not a, a, you know, a cherubim or a seraphim. He gave what? How many sons did God have? 10,000 sons, 10 hundred sons. One, you had one son, one child, and you're going to give them for the world to, to, to live and to die for what? For this world. Boy, that's love. That's love. Never doubt the love of God for you. He, he bankrupted heaven for you and for me. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever or whoever believes in him shall what? Shall not perish but have eternal life. Isn't that great? Why did God send Jesus? Because of love. Why did Jesus come? Now, I think there was a little, maybe, you know, administrative council meeting before Jesus came to earth. And, and I think Jesus had a choice in this thing. I mean, I think he, you know, say, hey, you know, we got to do something. They messed it up. I mean, we created perfect people in a perfect environment and a perfect planet, but they messed it up. See, I mean, do you think about that? My land, Adam and Eve messed the whole thing up and they lived in a perfect, perfect place. Right. And, and God said, you know, are you willing to go, Jesus? And, and Jesus said, I'm willing to go. And he came some 2,000 years, the Bible says, in the fullness of time. And he demonstrated his love. See, God the Father, watch this now. God the Father demonstrated his love for us and our world by sending Jesus. But Jesus demonstrated his love for us in what? In dying for us. John 15, verse 13, one of my favorite verses about love says this. Greater love, someone say greater love. Greater love. Has no one than this than to lay one's life down for his friends. There, you, you, can, you can't demonstrate any other greater love than dying for somebody. I mean, it doesn't get, that's it. That's top shelf stuff. And, and, and the Bible tells us that Jesus demonstrated his love for the world, for me and for you. By what? By by dying for us on Calvary's cross. See, God loves you, and we need to be thankful. Lord, thank you for your love. I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I, I, I certainly don't uh, appreciate it enough, but thank you for your love. And Lord, help me get up every single day. This is the first reason we need to be thankful every single day. Lord, thank you for your love for me. Thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for me, for demonstrating on Calvary's cross your love for me. I mean, you know, there's, that's love. There's no greater demonstration than one's life being laid down for another. Let me just ask you by a show of hands, those parents here today, maybe even grandparents here today, how many of you, if it was come down to it, your son, your daughter's death or your death would raise your hand and say, take me. Come on now, raise your hand. Yeah, take me. Take me. I, I will gladly die. There, no question. I mean, my hand, someone's going to die. Your child or you, take me. And see, that's what our father did. That's what our elder brother Jesus did. He said, take me. I love him that much. And if I asked you, why would you die for your child? Because of your love for them. Not because they always make you happy. <laughs> Not because they always act right or talk right or, or do what you tell them to do on the fifth time you ask them to do it. <laughs> 
but because of what? Because of your unconditional love for your children, right? Regardless of what they do or they don't do, they're your kids, and you're not going to let them die. You're going to have to, the death's going to have to come through you, right? And that's what Jesus did for us. That's what God did for us. And that's the first reason we ought to get up every, every day. And I mean every day. And thank God. Lord, thank you for loving me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for loving me. And, 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 and I praise you for this. Thank you, God, for, for dying for me so that I might have eternal life. Amen. The second reason we should be thankful is for his goodness. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is what? He's good, and His love, there it is again, endures forever. Lord, I tell you what, thank God for His enduring love for us, right? He endures our silliness. He en endures our sin. He endures our stupidity, right? His love is, endu is enduring. And even in the midst of that, His goodness is reaching out to us. Lord, if we just need to think about sometimes, I think, the goodness of the Lord to us. God has been so good, so good to us. I mean, it, it, we can't even come up with all of the ways. Just this past week, God has been so good. Amen. Think about your family. Think about your friends. Think about your home. Think about all of the clothes, and I mean all of them, that's in your closet. I mean, there's people. We need to remind ourselves here, especially as Americans, how good we've got it. I mean, we need, we all need, and I think everybody, including me, we all need every once in a while just to kind of take a trip outside of America. Just every once in a while. Just go south. Central South America, one country, Pastor Tim. Just pick one and just go and then come back home. And, and you'll be grateful. You will be grateful for the goodness of God in your life and in my life. And, and again, we, we've got, if we could just stop right there and count the hundreds and thousands of reasons and ways God has been good to us. And, and you know what? We need to think, maybe find one of those things and, and, and make a note of it and mention it in prayer for, for maybe a phone call when you were down from a friend. Maybe a card in the mail from someone who loves you. Just little things, not just the big things. We have a, we have a blessing bowl in our house with little sheets of paper. This is how we do it. And, and I don't do it enough. We don't do it enough, do we, Hope? And, and, and we, we little, write little things down. When, when they come across our minds for, for things that we're grateful for, for people we're grateful for, for, for just the goodness of God. And we write it down and we put it in a bowl. We fold it up and put it in a little bowl. And then at the end of the year, we dump the bowl and we go through the hundreds and thousands of things that God's done for us. It, it, well, I tell you what, that's, that's a reminder, right? All of us can do that. If you got a journal, just write down, I don't know, whatever it is. Just to, sometimes you just need to write, oh, I'm just so thankful for Brother Dave leading us in worship today. How many of you are grateful for Brother Dave leading us in worship today? All right. That's just one thing, right? Just one thing. It could be numerous things. Uh, we, we, we probably spend all day at that blessing bowl, right? <laughs> Writing them down if we were really truthful and honest. But that's just being grateful for the goodness of the Lord. Reason number three, I think we need to be thankful, is for His redemption. For His redemption. You know, uh, here in a few weeks, we're going to be in our Christmas series. We're going to read the Christmas story. Luke 2 is probably one of the, the greatest chapters uh, talking about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love this verse. Luke 2, verse 38, talks about the prophetess Anna, who was at the temple when Mary and Joseph came to dedicate him when he was eight years old. It says this, coming up to them at that very moment, Anna gave thanks to God and spoke about the child, Jesus, to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Isn't that interesting? She gave thanks to God for, for the Christmas child, for God's redemption. Another word for redemption would be salvation. We need to thank God for what? For saving us, for delivering us from our sins, for redeeming us from the curse of, of, of sin and death, for buying us back, right? For, for canceling our debts. Uh, he 
redeemed us by what? By his blood. And we need to thank God, right, for our redemption. We have been bought with a price. And we know that price was what? His life. Jesus laid down his life. And notice Anna was looking forward to the redemption. They were looking forward. Remember the first coming the, the Israelites, the Jewish people, they, they were looking forward to a Messiah. They were told and foretold for hundreds of years by numerous prophets, there's coming a Savior. There's coming a Messiah that's going to redeem you from your sins, that's going to heal you of your, of your sicknesses, that's going to restore and reconcile your relationship with God. They didn't know His name. But they knew he was coming. They were looking forward to the first coming of the Messiah. They were looking forward to the first coming of the, of the Savior. They were looking forward to the redemption of their, of their, of their souls, right? And, and, and she gave thanks for that redemption. And you know what today we get to do? We get to not only thank God for his redemption, we, need to, we, we get to look forward, not to his first coming, but to his second coming. We're, we're, we're those, uh, we are they that are looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I believe it's soon and very soon. I mean, you know, Anna was an elderly woman. She was a widow and she would, she would live there on the Temple Mount and every day and she was, and I think, you know, she, I don't know how old she was, maybe in her 20s and she was looking, she was looking and listening to the Holy Spirit. Maybe today's the day. And then she got and grew a little older and into her 30s and she was looking forward uh, in her 30s to, to seeing the, the Redeemer and then, then she hit her 40s and then her 50s and then her 60s and then in her 70s and then probably in her 80s all of a sudden and, and she's going a little slower now in her 80s and, and she's, but she's still looking and then one day this young teenage couple Mary was 14 Joseph was probably 18 or 19 come in holding the little 8 day baby boy and the Holy Spirit tapped her on the shoulder and said, there he is. There he is, the one you've been looking forward to. There he is, the Redeemer, the Savior of the world. Wow. What are you looking forward to? Are you looking forward to redemption? Well, what are you talking about, Pastor Tim? Well, the first time Jesus came, he came and redeemed our souls. The second time he comes, listen to this. He's redeeming our bodies. He's redeeming our bodies. Because at the rapture, the resurrection happens, and we're changed in the twinkling of an eye. You remember this message, right? The rapture, and, and, and our souls and our bodies are redeemed. The redemption of our bodies, the resurrection of our bodies, and we are one with the Lord. We come to encounter the Lord, and we will meet the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians 4 says, and so we shall be forever with the Lord. And I am looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Number four, let us be thankful for his righteousness. Oh, because we're saved, because we're redeemed, because of his love, we stand before a holy and righteous God, not as sinners, but as saints. Well, Pastor Tim, that's pretty bold of you. Yes, it's bold of me because my faith isn't in myself. My salvation and my hope isn't in my glory or in my good works. They're in what? They're in his glory and his good works. It's not what I've done that saved me. It's what Jesus has done that has saved me. I am righteous because of him. Some will say him. Yeah. Yes, we are thankful for his righteousness. Psalm 7, verse 17 says this. I will give thanks. I keep repeating myself. I will give thanks to the Lord because, here it is, of his righteousness. His righteousness. Thank you that I am righteous. I am holy. I am sinless. I am pure in the eyes of God. Not because of anything I did, not because of anything I said, but because of Him. See, to God belongs all the glory. Not to me, not to anything we've done or said, but to Him. To Him belongs all the glory for saving us, for redeeming us, for washing us and cleansing us from our unrighteousness. And he gives us what? He gives us his righteousness, his holiness. So when then God looks at you and I, we are perfect 
in his eyes. We thank God for his righteousness. And because we do that, look at the second part of this verse. Therefore, I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. Amen. Because of what Jesus has done for us, boy, it births praise, it births thanksgiving, it births singing and shouting and worshiping. Again, the worship leaders up here behind me on a Sunday morning shouldn't have to crank us up, you know, to get us to praise God. We ought to walk through the door and say, my God, he's been so good to me. He saved me. He's delivered me. He saved me. Uh, whatever, forgiven me favored me on the job this week. He's given me his righteousness. I can't wait. Hurry up, worship leaders. Get up there so I can sing the praises of God and thank him for his righteousness to us. Reason number five, talking about reasons for Thanksgiving. I'm just giving you 10 here today. Number five, we need to be thankful for his sacrifice. We've spoke about this already, but I want to go a little bit deeper. We, we talked last Sunday that the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, the communion table, is a table of thanksgiving. And every time we take communion, every time we take part of the Eucharist, remember the Eucharist in the original language means thanksgiving. We're to return thanks. We're to give praise to God. Matthew 26, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given Thanks. Do you see that? When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. We're in a new covenant with God through his blood, which is poured out for many. Why? For the forgiveness of sins. Jesus shed his blood to forgive us of our sins. And every time we partake of communion, we're what? We're thanking God for his sacrifice, for his substitutionary atonement. See, he, again, he volunteered to lay his life down for you and I. He didn't have to go to the cross. He wasn't even guilty of committing a crime. He was... <laughs> He was falsely accused. You want to talk about a mock trial and fake news? Just read the account of Jesus. I mean, they were bringing in witnesses, and the witnesses wouldn't even, couldn't even line up. And then they finally just had to ask him point blank, are you God? Are you the Son of God? And he said, I am. I am. He said, well, and then the high priest tore his robe because that was blasphemy, and that was a, a death. That was a death penalty. Now you think about this, and they put him on the cross, and he knew, and he knew who he was, and I want to listen to, listen to this, and there were only, all the disciples left, except for one, John, all of them scattered, read the account of the crucifixion of Jesus, when they started scourging him and whipping, I mean, they all scattered, the pillars of faith, except for one, the youngest, the teenager, John, he stayed with them all. And, and there were some other people that didn't leave him in his hour of, of trial and torture and torment and crucifixion. Well, who were they? They were the women. <laughs> I mean, are women stronger than men? Yeah, buddy. I mean, my land, is that even a choice? The women stayed. The women stayed. And you know who was there leading them all? Listen to this. Mary, his mother. And you know what she could have done? She could have got him off that cross. She could have stopped the whole thing. I'm going to tell you how. She could have said, when he said, yes, I am the son of God. I am God. She could have said, no, he's not. This whole thing's a farce. This, I made this whole Gabriel thing up, showed up to me, you know, at the age of 14 and said I was a blessed mother and, and there was going to be. No. She could have stopped it at the cross. This is all, it's wrong. He's lying. All this thing is lying. And she could have stopped it. But she didn't. Why? Because she knew he was the son of God. She knew who he was. She knew it. 
and she stood there and wept like a mother as they beat her son to a pulp. Matter of fact, the Bible says he was unrecognizable. And her heart shattered, not into a thousand pieces, into a million pieces. And she knew, she knew he was the son of God. And she remembered the voice of the angel that said your heart one day would break. And I think she went back to that time when the story began there in Nazareth. When the angel appeared to her and said, now I understand. Now I understand. We need to thank God. We need to thank Jesus for his sacrifice for us. He laid down his life for you and for me, that we might have life in that more abundantly. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16 says this, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we partake a participation in the body of Christ? What does that mean? That means that you and I, our sins, our sicknesses were crucified with Jesus. See, you and I, we're the ones that put him there. We're the ones that, 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 that required him to come and to make his sacrifice. And because he did, because he died for us, we live eternally grateful and thankful for him. Amen. We need to thank God for his sacrifice. Boy, I tell you what, I can't wait to do that someday face to face and eye to eye and hand to hand and, and to see the nail pierced hands and, and, and his feet. And by the way, the, the nails aren't in his palms. The nail pierced were in his wrists and we're going to see them and we're going to say, you took the nails for me. You took the stripes for me because of your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for me. Amen. Amen. Reason number six. Oh, this is the good part. <laughs> Thank God for his inheritance. You know, some of you know some things about inheritances. How do you receive an inheritance? Someone has to die. You only receive inheritances after someone dies. Someone died for you. His name is Jesus. And because Jesus died for you, think about this. You and I have an inheritance in him. Oh, it's amazing. And what an inheritance it is. Colossians 1 verse 12 says, Give joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you. See, you're qualified through Jesus Christ to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Well, what's he talking about pastor tim he's talking about eternity in heaven yes. see we are we are, have been given an inheritance and not just any inheritance not an earthly inheritance an eternal inheritance forever and ever and ever through jesus christ through his death and through his resurrection we have an inheritance now we haven't received it yet but boy i tell you what someday soon and very soon we're going to get there we're going to receive it we're going to walk in it we're going to look around and go wow and you want to know one thing that's that's absent there's a lot of things that are absent in heaven but one of the things that are absent in heaven is darkness it's a kingdom of what it's a kingdom of light it's a kingdom of love it's a kingdom of 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 everlasting joy with God and his holy people. We've been given an inheritance and, and we need to remind ourselves sometimes when life gets tough, when, when the day gets dark, we have a great inheritance an eternal inheritance awaiting for us in heaven. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. Reason number seven, we need to give thanks to God. Talking about thanks living. Every single day, we can be giving God thanks for any of and all of these. We need to thank God for his kingdom. Oh, and this is, do I dare say, this is talking about government. <laughs> we need to thank God for his government. Hebrews 12, verse 28 says this, Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that government. I'm looking forward to that kingdom. I'm looking forward to King Jesus 
ruling and reigning on the earth. I'm looking forward to a life in a kingdom with a perfect king leading a perfect government. Let me tell you about that kingdom. Well, it's a kingdom of righteousness. It's a kingdom of truth and justice and integrity and, and, and life and liberty and freedom. And it's a kingdom of joy. It's a kingdom, let me say it this way, of peace. I'm looking forward to that kingdom. I'm looking forward to, to, to that government. You know, Isaiah chapter 9, we were going to probably read about it here in December. It's a great, you know, Christmas passage, you know, and it talks about the government shall be upon his shoulders, right? And of his kingdom there shall be, and I love this part, there shall be no end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about this. We'll never vote again. <laughs> no more voting in, in this kingdom. Once Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom, it's an eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that kingdom. And it's interesting. And, and Jesus, I mean, I need to, I need, this is a message series. I need to talk about and teach about the kingdom of God. But Jesus in the Lord's Prayer, you pray it, I pray it every day. He taught us to pray these words. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. So yes, when we die, we go to heaven, we get to experience that kingdom. But we need to be praying into that kingdom that that kingdom would come to earth now. Someone say now. now. Yes. Thy kingdom come, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want heaven to come to earth. I want, I want, imagine this, truth from leadership. I want honesty from leadership. Imagine that. That shouldn't be asking a whole lot, but it seems to be today in our world at every level of government, right? Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 We need to be thankful for his kingdom. Thankful for his rule. And, and, and thankful for, for his goodness and his righteousness in our lives. In our lives. And I thank, I'm so thankful. It's interesting that it's not just going to be a global kingdom. It's not just going to be limited to earth. This is an amazing thing to me. I mean, the heavens, the universe is going to come under the kingdom of God. Everything, everything is going to come under his rule. How do we know? Well, because the Bible tells us every knee will bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. His, he's going to set up not just an earthly kingdom, but an eternal kingdom and an everlasting kingdom that can't be shaken. Amen? Amen. And I'm thankful for that kingdom. Amen. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done in, 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 our, in our lives and in this time and in this place. Reason number eight. Oh, this is a good one. I think a lot of us do this, especially this time of year. Fall is my favorite season. You all know that if you know me. I'm thankful for God's creation. I'm thankful for his creation. What a world. What a world he created. And all the beauty, all the splendor. You know, 1 Timothy 4, 5, Paul says to Timothy, For everything God created is good. Nothing is to be rejected if it's received with what? Thanksgiving. Because if it's consecrated by the word of God and prayer. You know, I got to thinking about this today. I, I, I woke up and, and, you know, I thank God, of course, for the, the beautiful day today. Thank you for the sun. I thanked him. You know, I, again, kind of re was reminded about last Sunday and how beautiful it was outside and, and, and the trees and all the colors. And, oh, it was so nice. We spent the day outside working around the yard, you know, and, and I was so grateful for that. And, and then I woke up today. I'm thinking, wow, God, <laughs> what a difference one week made, you know. And, and, and then the Holy Spirit said, well, you got a lot to be thankful for. I said, yes, sir, I do. And, and, and I said, let me start by saying I'm thankful for a warm house. Boy, I'm thankful for heat. I recognize there's people homeless and cold, right? I'm thankful for, for the heat at the tab. 
<laughs> I'm thankful for a warm church today. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful for shelter. I'm thankful. Just, just, you know, there's, there's, there's always something we could be thankful for. Not that I'm not thankful for the cold weather, but, but I, I just am getting old. My bones are getting old and I, I you know, it doesn't feel quite as good as it once used, used to. But we're thankful, right? Thankful for creation. Boy, I tell you what, some of you have traveled like me across this, this country, maybe even around the world, have seen some beautiful, beautiful places. Whether that's the beach, whether that's the mountains, whether that's the Great Plains, whether that, whether, wherever that's at, whatever continent you're on, it's just beautiful. I've got a screensaver uh, system. I don't know whether you call it that comes up on my computer every day and it's uh, photos of different places in the world. Some of you probably maybe this, you know, it's a different photo every day. Every day is a different photo. And so I turn my computer on at the beginning of the day and there's this beautiful picture. And sometimes, you know, it's in, in the far East and sometimes it's in, in, in Australia and, and sometimes it's Hawaii. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, out west. I mean, it's all over Russia. I mean, all Europe. I mean, all different types of pictures. And so I just start, oh, I, I thank God for that. And, and they tell you the place this picture, this picture was taken, you know, in, here in this location. And, and I'm like, oh, oh, God, thank you for such a beautiful world. Think about this. And we would have never known any better. God could have made the whole thing gray. Our whole world could have been black and white. And we would have known nothing better. But he didn't. God created our world uh, with all these colors, all these beautiful places. And, and we've got the opportunity every single day to thank him for it. To thank him for it. Amen. I mean, that's what we should do. Everything God created is good. It should be, it should be uh, uh, thankful and grateful from our hearts for his creation. Amen. 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 Reason number nine, reason number nine to be thankful for every day of our lives. We should be thankful for what? For his word, the Bible, the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 62, the psalmist says, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws, righteous laws. We need to thank God for his word. Boy, if there's ever a time and a day, we need a manual for life. You need a manual for parenting. You need a manual for marriage. You need a manual for, for your finances. You need a manual for friendship. You need a go-to book for this or for that. We can go to the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. And we can receive counsel. We can receive wisdom. We can receive guidance and direction for whatever is going on in our lives. All you got to do is open up the book and God will what? God will lead you, and I love this, in righteousness. Now, what does that mean? God's word will lead us in the right way versus the wrong way. In other words, his counsel is good. His counsel is right. So go to God when you've got a question. Not that you can't go to, you know, Bubba and Mimi and Grampy and, and Sissy and Bobo and, and Auntie and Unky and Grandma and Grandpa and this friend and that friend. That's all fine and dandy. But listen, not everybody is going to give you right counsel. Not everybody's going to lead you in the way you should go. Because most of them... Most of them aren't reading the book. Most of them aren't receiving the right way. So how can they tell you which way to go? I mean, just look at their lives. Dear God, don't, don't, don't even talk to me. You're, whoo, talk about a detour. But we can go to who? We can go to the Lord. We can go to the book. Amen. And receive right counsel. Lord, lead me, guide me, direct me. You know what James, the brother of Jesus said? G James said this uh, about, 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 about Jesus and about seeking wisdom. He said, if any man need wisdom, just go to God. He liberally will give it to you. In other words, just go to the Lord. Lord, I don't know what to do. Boy, I pray that a lot. 
Lord, I, I am stumped. I'm at a T in the road. Do I go left? Do I go right? I don't know which way to go. Lord, you lead me. You guide me. You direct me. And you know what the Word says? And I love this. One of my favorite verses. And you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. You will hear the voice of the Spirit. And some of you have heard that voice. It could be just a little nudging. It could be just, well, I just, I just kind of feel like I need to go right. And then the next tea, you know, well, I, God, which way? I just kind of feel like I need to go left. You know, I feel like, you know, come on, some of you understand what I'm talking about. It doesn't make sense, but you're seeking the counsel of the Lord. Lord, lead me, guide me, direct me. And, and of course, He can lead you to specific verses about this or, or about that. But we need to be thankful for His laws. We need to th be thankful for His Word. Someone say His Word. His Word. The psalmist said in 119, 105, Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, why do we need a lamp and a light in this world? You won't need it in the next. I've told you there's no Bibles in heaven. Don't need them. There's no faith in heaven. Your faith will be turned to sight. Why do we need His Word? Like a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. Because this world's dark. Because this world's full of curves and pitfalls set by the enemy for you and I to fall into. And we need, come on now, like a flashlight at night. This is our flashlight for life. Now see, the flashlight, it'll show you maybe the next step or two. It's not like brights on your Buick. I can see the next hundred steps. <laughs> right? It's a lamp. It's a light. And if we really had to go back all the way back to the psalmist, I mean, it was a candle. That's what he was referring to. Your word's like a candle. And most candles just show you the next step. And then watch this. You take that step, and it shows you the next step. And then you take that step, and it shows you the next step. And it's all in the Word. Your Word. Your Word is a lamp and a light. Lord, I need your word. Lord, show me the way. Show me the danger. Show me the pitfalls. Show me the snares and the traps set by Satan to take me out, to cause me to stumble. Yeah. Lord, I can go around that rock. I can go around that pit, right? Yeah. I can go around that bad decision, that bad relationship, that wrong friendship. I can avoid it. Why? Because your, your word is a lamp unto my, my feet and a light, I love this, unto my path. It shows me the way. It shows me the way. It shows us the way. Think about this. It shows us the way to heaven. I get asked all the time, Pastor, how do you get to heaven? Well, let's read the book. Let's read the manual. You want to know how to get to heaven? Here it is. It tells you. Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. No one goes to the Father except through me. It's right there on the Word. Right there on the wall, I should say. In the Word. <laughs> the Word's on the wall. It shows us, amen, how to get to heaven. It's not complicated. It's not, but we've got to read it. We've got to read it. And it will, I love this, and, and, and really, it's a biblical word. It will enlighten us. See, we've let the Eastern mystics take that word. They're not enlightened. They're endarkened. I mean, all these Eastern religions are false religions. Most of them, well, let's just say all of them are doctrines of devils leading people astray, leading people into slavery, into darkness, into depression, into depravity, into, into some awful places. But the light of God's, I, I got I to gotta keep picking it up, but the light of God's Word can lead them out of it. Amen? Amen. And let me say today, you might be in a dark place today. You might be going through a dark time today. You, you might look up and down and left and right, and all you see is pitch black darkness. Well, I know something that will light your world if you'll get in it, and it's His Word. It's His Word. You know another thing that will light your world? God's presence. Because God's presence is light. 
when God comes into your heart, I told you the story last Sunday when I got saved, the light, I mean, the light came on. The, the light came on in my world. It lit my world up. And, and God's presence is light. Get in his, you, some of you feel the light. I feel the light right now. Just, just dispelling the darkness. John said it this way. Uh, in, in John 1, that, that when Jesus came, he came into a what? World of darkness. And his presence lit up the world. We need to thank God for his word. Reason number 10, I close with this. The tenth reason we could give God thanks and praise every single day of our lives is for his deeds. For his deeds unto us. Psalm 9, verse 1. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. There we go. And I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Psalm 107, verse 15. Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let me ask you, and only you can answer this. What has God done for you this past week? Boy, he's done a lot. He's done a lot. Unfortunately, most of us, and I'm just as guilty as you, we just kind of take it for granted. We feel entitled to the goodness of God. We feel that God's obligated to do this and do that for us. He is not. And we need to be thankful, right? For his good deeds. Be thankful that you got the job. There was a hundred people that applied for that job and you got it. Be thankful that you got that place to live in. Be thankful that you've got that car to drive. Be thankful that you, come on, whatever it is, you've got those clothes to wear today. Be thankful for, for this or for that. Each and every one of us, again, get yourself a blessing bowl <laughs> and, and, and write down the deeds that God has done for you. Oh, I tell you what. And it will what? It will create a life of thanksgiving. You know, there, the people of God should be known for a great many things. But one of the things we should be known for is, is thanksgiving, thankfulness. We should be the most grateful people on the planet. We really, we have so much to be grateful to God for. I mean, just, and, and, and you start sharing, me and, me and one of my covenant brothers, well, both of them, I talk numerous times throughout the week, and we always ask one another, well, what's the good thing that's going on in your life? What's God doing? And boy, I tell you what, we just start talking about all the goodness of God. Well, God did this, and God did that, and, 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 and all of a sudden, my land, God's been working all around us. God's been active all around our lives. And, 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 and then we say, well, okay, what do you believe in God to do that he hasn't done? And we share our prayer requests. We always close in prayer, you know, for one another. But we always start with the, the good deeds. What's God doing? What's God done? And we need to brag on God. We, need, we used to call that testimonies, right, in the church. People would get up and give testimonies. Well, what was that? Just telling about God, telling about his deeds. I was sick and I got healed. I was sad, and God made me glad. I was lonely, and God brought me a friend. I was broke, and a brother at church gave me $100. I was lost, and now I'm found. I was bound for hell, and now I'm bound for heaven. I didn't have a community a family to belong to, and God brought me to the tab. So many deeds, so many good deeds, amen, that God's done for us. Just be grateful and thankful for those. And I tell you what, you know what it does for me? It bursts faith for the things that I'm still waiting on God for. Because I know he's going to do it. Because he's a good, good father. It's who he is. It's who he is. And I tell you what, we're going to, the last, the last message here in a couple of weeks, I'm going to, I've got 10 more things I want to share with you in regards to reasons next Sunday. But the last message, can I tell you what the last message is? Is the rewards of gratitude. We receive rewards for being grateful. Isn't it interesting? Even in the natural, we're more likely to do something kind again for someone 
who was grateful for that versus someone who just took it for granted. I'm more likely to be kinder to you if you're grateful to me for that versus when I open the door for you and you walk through it without saying thank you. I'm probably, and you need to pray for Pastor Tim now, I'm probably not as likely to open the door for you if you're not grateful. Now the Holy Spirit will probably still have me open the door for you, but I won't like it. Come on now, you know how the Holy Spirit goes. You open that door whether they're grim. Yes. <laughs> you smile at them. Yeah. I want to shut it in their face and say, you open the door, right? <laughs> but isn't that true? We're more likely to do more for those that are grateful to us and thankful to us for the things that we do. And I'm going to prove it to you. And the same is true of God. When we're grateful to Him, when we're thankful to Him, boy, he's, He just is so liberal to bestow even more and more and more blessings. I can't wait to share that message with you. It's going to be a wonderful message. Come back. Come back. Come back. All right? You know, I want to close today with probably the greatest deed. We've talked a lot about it this morning. The greatest deed God has ever done for us is die for us so that we might know Him so that we might be in a relationship with Him. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you've never welcomed Him into your heart and life, I want to give you that opportunity today to not just know a head knowledge about God, but a heart experience to where you will feel your heart strangely warmed. Can I get an amen? amen. You will experience the darkness in your life leave. Not because anything out here changed, but because something in here changed. And if you're here today and you've got religion, and you know all the right things to do and say, but you don't have relationship, you're missing it. You might be watching online today and you say, Pastor Tim, I'm, I don't know Jesus. I don't know the, the blessing and the benefit of being at peace with God. And I want to give you that opportunity today whether you're watching online or you're here in person, would you bow your heads with me and close your eyes? I just want to lead you in a prayer of invitation, inviting Jesus to save you, to heal you, to deliver you, to bring his presence and his light and his love and his peace and his purpose and pour them liberally into your heart. And he will change you from within. How do I know that? Because I've experienced it, my friends, and numerous others here at the church, the tabernacle, have experienced it. And we want you to experience it as well. If you say, yes, pastor, I want to do that today, would you pray this prayer out loud with me right now? And pray it to God with every atom of your being, mean it with every fiber. Say these words, dear God, I come before you this morning a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and life. Be my Lord and Savior. And help me live for you all the days of my life. And help me be a thankful witness for you for all the things you've done for me in life. Come into my heart and life. Dispel the darkness with the light of your presence and the light of your love for me. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. Would you put your hands together? <laughs> Praise the Lord.